Now that this almost year old laser is in my hands, I can give all of you my thoughts on if it's right for you. And honestly, it really could be. If you finish watching this video and you're interested in learning more about the Xtool S1, you can check the links in the description. Any purchases through those will get me a small commission, which helps me do what I do. Thanks. When the S1 was released, it was the first ever fully enclosed diode laser. And since that time, we've had both Creality and WeCreate offer their own enclosed lasers. So why would Xtool send me a year old laser to review that you would think Creality and WeCreate have looked at and improved upon? Well, let's find out. Back in 2020, I was lucky enough to review the Xtool D1. And even then, Xtool was striving to be one of the best diode laser companies around. And the D1 came pretty much fully assembled. And having to put together a bunch of lasers in the past, which was never fun, the fully assembled was a big deal to me. It really stood out, and I knew they were striving to be better and always setting the bar that everyone else is going to follow. The S1 is pretty much the same. There's very little you need to do to get it up and running. The bar is certainly raised again in the build quality of the S1. It certainly rises above the competition in that aspect. Everything seems a step above the rest from parts, finish, and overall feel. It is quite a beast and gives me a lot of confidence in its ability to perform and hold up to constant use. Now, the most immediate and glaring difference between the Falcon 2 Pro we create Vision and Xtool S1 is the very surprising lack of a camera on the S1, which I honestly thought that would be a deal breaker for, well, pretty much everyone. But after giving it some more thought and playing around with it, it really may not matter at all, given the very, very strong, strong strengths of this machine. Strong strengths? Whatever. What the S1 lacks in a camera, it makes up for in precision. It's the only laser of these three that I would trust to be 100% accurate because of its twin point positioning system and dynamic autofocus system. You can use the Xtool software to have the laser plot out where it's cutting perfectly by moving the head and marking out its placement. This even works on curved surfaces. Yeah, curved surfaces. That's insane. Though it's fantastic to have a camera on the Falcon 2 and Vision, because they are fisheye, they do tend to start to lose some precision towards the edge of the camera view and are never quite 100%. This system is 100% accurate. And if your business involves engraving onto already crafted items of any size, uh, sound the horn, this is definitely the laser for you. For someone like me, 100% precision isn't a huge deal. I'm almost always cutting out the item that I'm engraving, so as long as I leave myself a little room for error, I'm golden. I use these lasers for leathercraft patterns, and when doing prototypes or one-offs, I just need it to be close. When manufacturing on mass, I put a full piece of leather in the machine that takes up the whole cutting area, so that precision no longer matters. But guess what? Neither does the camera. But if you have a pre-existing product that you want laser directly onto, then precision is at the top of your list, and I'd have to recommend the Xtool S1 over anything else I've seen so far. Last year when the S1 launched, it came with all of the safety features that we now take for granted and expect from any enclosed diode laser. It's a class one enclosure, meaning you don't need glasses, the coating on the lid protects you from the light, and because we're relying on the lid for protection, whenever you open it, power is immediately cut to the laser, which is kind of important. Um, yeah. There are also fire safety sensors inside to power down the laser in case of a fire. And of course, if you need to stop the machine suddenly, there's the big red button to emergency shut down the machine. So I almost exclusively use laser cutters for leather, either engraving onto leather or cutting leather. And I'll play around with some other materials from time to time, but what I want this laser to do is cut through up to 16 ounce leather, which is around a quarter inch or 6.4 millimeters, and engrave at a solid speed and detail. When using it to cut out a set of heavy duty elbow halves for some arm armor, while also putting some lovely art on them, it does exactly what I want, and honestly makes it look easy. 
The Xtool software is great, though you can use the very popular Lightburn program if you wish, but you obviously can't use the plotting positioning system in Lightburn like you can in the Xtool software. I'm going to go into more detail on the positioning system here. It's really quite straightforward. You just need to hit start marking and then choose what type of marking you're doing. Then you just move your laser head around the piece and hit the button at the front of the S1 on each of your marking spots. Then the software will show you what it mapped out and you can position your project where you want it to be in the software and then just let the S1 get to work. The S1 has three different laser modules as of the making of this video with a 40 and 20 watt diode option as well as a two watt infrared. Now the infrared gives you the ability to engrave onto metal, which is really cool. While the 20 watt has a narrower beam, so it'll engrave finer details onto your projects, be they leather, wood, or something else. The accessories that came with my review version of the S1 are the air assist and honeycomb plate. I'm not quite sure what their bundles will look like in the future, but I would say these are must-have additions for your S1 package, so be sure to at least pick those up if they are not part of your bundle. There's also a few optional accessories that I wasn't sent to review, but that you might find handy going forward with your own S1. Another accessory purchased separately for this laser is a fire suppression system that will put out fires if they occur, which is pretty wild. There's a riser that adds more space to operate a rotary attachment, and of course the rotary attachment itself. This riser also adds a drawer to more easily remove debris from the machine, which is one of only a couple of cons that I had with the machine overall. And if you have the riser, you have the option to add a conveyor belt that will greatly increase the length of material that you can put into the machine. It'll feed your project right through the laser. The only couple of cons that I could come up with for this laser are the obvious ones. It would be nice if it had a camera and it doesn't have a tray for debris. whoop de doo I guess. Um, I think we're really grasping at straws here if we're trying to find cons. Given the precision of this laser, does it need a camera? I don't know. I think might as well. Might as well have a camera, but not a big deal. Hey, in case you didn't know, I sell leathercraft patterns for both laser cutters and print. You can find links to those in the description of this video. And you can also find links to my Patreon, where it is a screaming deal on patterns and artwork. So go check that out. At least have a look. There's a free tier as well. And you can also join us on the Dark Horse Workshop Discord server. We're doing giveaways, contests, talking leather craft, medieval stuff, Viking stuff. So go have a look in the description and hopefully I'll see you around. Thanks. I think by now you've already figured out my conclusion. If you're looking for a precision laser with outstanding build quality by a company whose track record of well, quality and innovation is second to none, this is the laser for you. And if you want to help me do what I do, be sure to check out the links in the description of this video to the Xtool S1, where any sales through those links will get me a small commission at no extra charge to you. And that helps me continue to do what I do. And until next time, Keep on being creative in whatever it is you do.